Okay, hey everyone. Uh, please, can you tell me in the chat if you can uh, hear me all right? And I'll uh, turn my um, screen thing in a second. Okay, you should be able to um, see my screen and I have your chat here on the left side uh, so you can ask me questions and chat with me and first I would like to explain what we will be doing today and so okay here I have um, a file actually two files which is one is like this and one is like this and these are um, roll scans of a picture I did today and I wanted to show you how I edit my pictures in Photoshop before I can use them on my website and for prints and for doing stuff with them. Um, so with watercolors I usually get a file like this which has the texture of the paper and um, just the painting and here i have an additional part which is the sign on the on the left part of the shop uh, which i didn't like i did not like um, in the first version it was kind of blurry and i did not like uh, how it looked like so i painted it again so i would like to copy and paste it into the uh, final image also uh, before I can actually use it and I will show you how I clean up my image and I show you how I uh, do stuff to it so it looks a bit more presentable and of course you can just ask me stuff and um, uh, I can see the chat uh, on my iPad here uh, so yeah okay so first I would like to center this building more or less um, so let's straighten this thing uh, okay and then i'll add a bit on the left side so we can actually put the sign here and it's not cut maybe like this and we need don't need the bottom so much something like this and also from the top okay I actually haven't used um, colored inks so much except of the uh, of the uh, Kobe ones and the Kobe ones are not actually so good for painting they are mostly for uh, fountain pens so uh, I had some not problems but um, some things that I was not really happy about when using those inks for painting um, they were quite unpredictable especially when diluted with water um, I never knew actually what color I will get in the end so that was um, a bit stressful when I was painting so I'll mask it here and I'll erase some parts like this part here so we should not be able to actually tell when where is the connection between those parts yeah that looks okay so before and after I didn't like um, the part here that um, was a bit blurry I wanted to paint a shadow over the letters um, and it didn't work well because it 
blurred the letters that were already painted there and then I tried to paint over it again and it made everything look kind of muddy and um, not interesting so I did this part again without the shadow and it looks better I think it's e better because it's easier to understand what it what this is and it's kind of um, shiny and if you if you would like to know more about um, uh, drawing with inks I would recommend asking Laura Heikala about this because most of the um, art that she does um, she um, does with colored inks so um, she is probably a more competent person to ask than than me i think she uses like a german brand of of those inks but i haven't seen them in japan so i was not able to to test them yet and still i um recently wants to um kind of decrease the amount of um art supplies that i go and buy obsessively so Okay, so this is a step I don't have to do, um, uh, but I guess I'll, I'll try to do. So I'll just select this part and I'll fill it with the content aware thing. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So I just added the texture of the paper here. So some, there is something here. I will, I will be getting rid of the texture of the paper either way, but um, I want to have a clean start. Okay, so now we have this sign put here and I also added some paper on top uh, so we have a clean image that we can start editing. Dzisiaj edytuję plik ten tutaj i gadam z wami na live. Yeah, Noodler's ink is nice, probably, but it's another ink that I cannot get in Japan, which is a shame because I know that a lot of um, artists um, use it for their uh, line works. And here I'm using um, uh, gray, dark gray uh, waterproof ink, which is made by a company called Kakimori in Japan. And they have actually a shop where you can go and make your own ink color and all of those inks were, are waterproof, so that's awesome. Uh, if I had some more money and time, I would probably go there and make, make like six colors. I, I mostly used, used textures that I found in Photoshop or in Procreate, so uh, mostly it's just um, setting. Ah uh, yeah, this, this one I made myself, the, the, the brush tip. Okay, so um, the next step I would usually do is to get rid of the uh, paper texture um, around the thing that is painted. So uh, I do it just by selecting like this, about 32 tolerance. Okay, and I, this is 600 dpi by the way, select, modify, expand one pixel and then I make a layer which is um, levels and then I move this part left so um, it kills all, all the uh, paper texture but if you zoom in if you zoom in, you will still see that there are like spots and stuff. So um, this is uh, why I usually like to select the drawing by hand and like this. I'm pressing Alt by the way, so that's why I have this kind of double tool that can do straight lines and hand-drawn lines at the same time. Okay, uh, and I will inverse this and I will have a layer which is just white. 
so now I have a white fill that gets rid of most of the garbage on the paper it looks like this and I really like this method because it, I'm kind of um, sure that um, when I put this image for print I will not get uh, like a weird edge somewhere or something uh, usually I have a custom color I do it with white and I put the background in Photoshop on white and see if I if I got all the edges and there's no, no like one pixel edge on the file or something that will uh, be a pro pro problem later okay yeah dark gray yes okay so now what I would do is go around all the edges and see if the selection I did didn't eat into um, the picture itself and I will erase this mask in all those places so of course the select tool will sometimes go into um, the painting and eat in in some places or will leave like strange artifacts like this here uh, so usually I would just fix it with with a bro brush in these places then I think that it looks kind of unnatural and I will switch to black uh, to make the mask in some places that um, were not done properly and in some places I would just select like this and just fill it I know that this is kind of a tedious method but um, I kind of like to go around the picture and check if everything looks okay and get rid of all those uh, places I will sometimes switch to this layer and uh, fix like these kind of mistakes some of them not ev everything because it makes your picture look kind of digital uh, if you fix every every little mistake so and if i see like trash like here there's like a hair thing i would erase this like a spot i scan my work i have a, uh, a canon scanner which is a4 so um, I would like a bigger one but um, un unfortunately I have this one uh, which is good it is it's a really good scanner uh, and um, it makes really nice sharp scans even the even though the paper is sometimes warped a bit uh, but um, it's small it's a4 only so um, sometimes I have to um, scan in two parts or more and I have a video on my channel showing how I um, get a picture together that was scanned in two parts so okay hello Moja książka jest dostępna na Amazonie e, japońskim, z którego można kupować za granicy. E, jest poradnik na mojej stronie, jak kupować z japońskiego Amazonu za granicy, żeby było wszystko po angielsku. Ale można też poszukać na innych serwisach, które sprzedają japońskie książki za granicą. E, one są też wylistowane, część z nich jest wylistowana na mojej stronie. Lepiej po prostu zajrzeć na moją stronę i tam jest taki przycisk jak kupić książkę i tam jest wszystko co wiem na temat jak kupować książkę z, spoza Japonii. Ah. So I don't like having like this kind of uh, white spots inside of the painting. So when I have a place where um, the mask just it into the painting I would fix it and leave a bit of white here okay, so here I have to okay get this part correct and I like to work with the levels and not with just uh, white color 
because um, it kind of works better with dark edges and I don't have to worry about them so much. It's just some bright colors when, when the edge is not closed properly, it, 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 it sometimes um, it eats into the painting. And as I go along the edge, I also check if if I don't have like, like any like trash or, or hair or whatever on the edge of the painting. Like here. Okay. Moja książka kosztuje około 23 dolarów, ale to zależy kto sprzedaje i jak sprzedaje i gdzie się kupuje w, w różnych krajach, ona kosztuje trochę inaczej, jest też edycja po, po francusku, więc ona też kosztuje trochę inaczej, to zależy gdzie się ją kupuje, ale mniej więcej około 25 dolarów, 23 dolarów. Ok, so here's something. So sometimes um, the levels get um, into like bright edges and do stuff like this and I don't like it so I tend to fix edges like this so they don't have this weird blue fringe. Okay. And there's some trash here and here. And it's okay, so we are back at the beginning. So I'll just check this bottom edge here and it, we should be okay. Okay, so um, after doing a thing like this, so after going around the picture and checking if we don't have like uh, weird stray things and um, some problems with uh, the edges of the picture, we can be more or less um, sure that um, when we put it into a book or on a white background somewhere or uh, it's featured somewhere um, we don't have any like stray things or, or like weird artifacts that would uh, kind of spoil the effect okay so this is the picture cleaned up and on nice white background uh, so the next thing I would do is um, to look for any make a new layer and um, I'm using a Canon 9000 F so the next step is to look at the picture itself and see if there are any kind of problems uh, with the painting so for example here I have a, a stray hair thing gone I'm using here the, um, the J2 what is it called spot healing brush uh, but sometimes I will also use the stamp tool. Okay, so I'll just go over the painting and look for any places that um, I don't like, like hair and stuff. And sometimes you go, you get um, really small things, and sometimes you you go things like you get things like this one. So just erase it. It's nice because I also do prints of my paintings and sometimes they got printed uh, really big actually so um, I like to go over and check if there are any blemishes that I can just erase with a spot healing tool and they just go away
Yeah, I have we have started watching it. Uh, we have seen I think like three four episodes. Um, the beginning, the first episode, were really was really really good. We liked it. We we saw it like three times or something. Um, but but for us, the further it got, the more um, the quality dropped a bit, and also the story got a bit static. Um, I don't know if it's the um, original manga which is like this, or the the, the show is just. Uh, directed by a different person at like each episode or something but there is a, a really huge difference in quality and kind of pacing and everything in so um, some episodes are really nice and so episodes are like mm. so and because we had to pay like a monthly fee just to watch this one show uh, we stopped watching it after like four episodes maybe I will watch it I will watch it if it comes um, to a, like a different platform that we already have like a subscription so um, this painting um, is actually done uh, based on your how do you call it um, your comment mm, because um, after I did the uh, one of the new new shops that I'm doing right now uh, I asked you what other shops you would like to see and some of uh, one of you said um, that um, they would like to see a typewriter shop a shop that sells typewriters so I was like oh this is a nice idea and um, I have actually seen the uh, shops in Japan that sold um, not typewriters but something that's uh, called word press processors so like uh, electric typewriters with a small screen and I was like yeah recently a lot of retro things are coming back so maybe typewriters will be cool again uh, so I decided to do this. Okay, so um, now we have all the like trash and, and hair and stuff done with. I think mostly, most the biggest ones that I can see. Uh, okay, so let's see if there is something that I can do actually to the the painting itself to make it bit better a bit um, I would like to add a bit of wide passages here somewhere because um, I don't like how this um, plant is just like a bunch of green here so I would actually erase a bit of um, of it and see if I can do it digitally without being a bit too digital and um, I would also go for some things that um, like, like stray lines and stuff and try to fix them a bit. So let's do it. New layer. Uh, okay, so first I want to get rid of these lines here. I don't think that uh, uh, the anime th that animation is a good representation of the industry because this is just mostly fantasy I guess there are some there is a lot of knowledge there that um, is like this kind of insider knowledge or, or about how a, a, an animation is make made but um, the industry um, looks a lot a lot different uh, Okay, I have to copy some white from somewhere. Like here. Okay. Uh, this is a important part 
in this picture the logo here is an important part so i want to make it look nice and not perfect but presentable okay Witam serdecznie. Okay, the window looks okay. The win this window looks okay. There is like a hair here. What? No. Okay. Uh, so here I had a, a bit of an accident, and I get this. I got this kind of bluish kind of spot here. So let's try to get rid of it okay you will not see this in the finished picture i mean uh, these details are really really small but um the whole thing is um just full of like small mistakes so i don't want to fix everything just the places that while I was painting I was like ah, I wish I could have uh, done this right uh, and it would be a bit better so um, I most mostly remember these places uh, places I um, used a bit wrong um, How do you call it order of painting so uh, for example here the red got inside here so i would like to fix it a bit so to get a nice edge and little things like this um, thank you And especially when a mistake makes a place a bit harder to understand, I like to correct them and um, make things right. Okay. Okay, so if you have any like questions or things you would like me to talk about, um, I haven't tried Rebel 3. Uh, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> Sounds like a name of name of a software, but uh, I can be wrong. Uh, was it like th this this painting software that simulates like watercolors and stuff? Maybe. Okay, so here I I was trying to write an A, like sta, but um, I couldn't I couldn't do it. So I'll fix it. Not personally, no. Okay. Letters are really important in paintings like this. Um, nice letter work uh, adds a lot of realism, 
but also uh, you have to keep letters a bit loose so they don't look like uh, you just put some font in there so you have to have this nice balance of uh, the letters being nicely painted and at the same time um, not font like um, Um, in the animation industry, I think the um, hardest part for a background painter, there's few hard things. One is like you have to be uh, like everyone else. So you have to paint in a style that's um, at least really similar or best indistinguishable uh, to other artists that um, the, uh, paint in your team. And sometimes it's good if the team has a really high standard of painting, then uh, you can be kind of like leveling up while you do your work, which is really good. I learned a lot when I was doing the animation backgrounds. Uh, so uh, I think I, I learned a lot, a lot in a really short amount of time. But at the same time, you can um, go to a place where um, they just look at how many backgrounds you can do in a day uh, which makes everyone just um, trying to meet the deadlines and the style goals um, the style and the uh, experimentation uh, or trying to make things better just those aspects of work just go out of the window so then you um, also have to um, match the style of other people in your studio but you are going down in your quality uh, which is not good at all and um, I know of um, some studios that um, actually uh, use like libraries of trees and libraries of buildings and libraries of painted things that they already did to just be as efficient as they can so a person can do like three four backgrounds in a day which is crazy uh, because the quality will drop significantly of course uh, you cannot do um, detailed painting that uh, uh, will have like all kinds of nice stuff in the style and amount of details that they want in such a short, short amount of time uh, so somewhere you have to cut the corners and mostly uh, you just go for the uh, for how it looks like uh, so, yeah, of course, the, the pressure is enormous because um, uh, you have to um, do it uh, within your time limit. Uh, so, yeah, if you are lucky and if you are working in a place that um, takes quality and style seriously then you're lucky and you can develop and become a better artist while work become a better artist while working but um, if you go to a place that just wants you to do as much backgrounds in a second as possible then um, that's not a good job at all some but it's okay for some people I mean like if you want to be a craftsman and um, your goal is to be like a craftsman that can do like 100 backgrounds per month or something and this is where your pride is and you feel good okay with this um, then just go for it but um, uh, if you want to be more of an artist artist that um, has this opportunity to think about what he's or she is doing while while they are doing it then um, there's no not much leeway for this um, in the animation industry I guess yeah uh, there is a spot in Tokyo actually where uh, we really like to go a few spots actually um, for example we really like to go to the uh, Edo Tokyo open air architecture museum which is a um, museum uh, open air museum of buildings of japanese buildings and there are all kinds of old shops and old houses and retros 
uh, buildings there that you can just go into and explore and um, uh, you can sp spend whole day there just exploring and seeing all kinds of interesting buildings uh, which is nice I really like uh, Tsukishima which is in Tokyo uh, it's really it's a nice place for walks and uh, it has a nice vibe to it also like full of retro and interesting spots um, yeah Um, oh, that's the next question. I do few thumbnails. Um, for example, for this one, I did like three, four thumbnails, and um, I was uh, considering a bit different to look for the top part of the building, for the like like this part here. Uh, and um, I did actually a, a quite detailed sketch, and then showed it to Kana and thought it uh, thought about it a bit more and i was like no this is too complicated and too like fantasy looking so i was like okay what else i, I can do here to make it a bit more kind of realistic and grounded so i changed um this top part here so now it has like a typewriter button kind of style of thing uh, so um i would do like or thumbnails for a picture exploring some options and then uh, if i need i would do like different angles if i'm going to use it for for another project for example but mostly it's just like one two thumbnails then a bigger sketch and then if i don't know how to draw something uh, i would just look for references for this particular part and uh, then I just go straight into um, the final sketch and I try to um, think as I go. Um, if you want to be too perfectionist, uh, perfectionist <laughs> uh, about your um, drawing, it's easy to get kind of bogged down in the details and never finish anything. So it has to be this balance of um, quality versus um, actually doing something ha yo hi um kaisen don um, there, there was a there was a place near uh where we lived in um where was it uh hyogo eki near the hyogo station that did the kaisen dons right What was it called? Is it easy to be an artist in Japan? No, <laughs> it's not actually. I mean, it's easy in some ways, but it's not easy in other ways. Um, I would say no, uh, because you use the word artist. If you would say like, is it easy to be an illustrator or is it easy to be a manga artist or is it easy to be like a cute girl thing painting drawer um, then maybe yes uh, but um, if you uh, say artist um, it's kind of hard actually and this is because uh, in Japan uh, I think it's hard to do anything that does not fall in one of two categories like the popular art that you have everywhere and everyone is doing it like cute schoolgirls in, in cute uniforms or manga with explosions or whatever or like um, popular mangas right now uh, like everyday life manga or whatever or you do like the high level art that is um, in museums or um, like has exhibitions and everything then uh, you have this kind of framework and um, industry that you can get into and you can work with it but if you if you want to do a popular very popular art like just art uh, but at the same time you want it to be a bit more intelligent and have a bit more depth and be a bit different than what everyone else is doing then there's kind of no categories and no 
ways and doors are suddenly closed and na zdrowie and um, no one will know what to do with you because you do this kind of strange manga or whatever or your illustrations are like of houses only <laughs> what so if, if you are doing something that's um, standard and useful then you know, just everyone uh, knows what to do with you but um, if you are trying to do that something that's a bit more original and um, is a bit different then um, you can have uh, difficulties with making something that can be sold for example or um, published or made into um, commercials or used in a commercial way or something like that so Hi Kana. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> yes, we both have probably allergies. So yeah. We sneeze. Okay, so um I fixed some things here at the bottom. I fixed um okay, I have to fix this part. Okay, so um, I fixed most of the mistakes that I could remember doing when I was actually painting this um, and now uh, let's see if we can put some white details here into the tree. I'll make a new layer for this because this is a bit of an experiment. I tried I try to, when I'm location hunting, I, I try to look for places that are a bit unusual uh, that um, will give me something to work with from the start um, and um, but sometimes I just go with a hunch it's, um, it's like I know, for example, I know Tokyo a bit uh, and I know Kobe a bit because I live there also um, so I know okay I need like a beach for example okay so I'll go here or I need um, like old school train or whatever so I'll, I'll go here so it's nice to have this knowledge where to go so um, you're not completely mistaken with the things that are there uh, but sometimes it's just I go somewhere and um, actually I get things that I didn't expect at all and this is also good because um, it prompts you actually to do things that uh, you haven't planned and these are probably the best things that you can get from a location hunt something that gives you inspiration that you were not looking for it's easy to go like oh I need a train so I'll just go and do some photos of a train but it's really lucky if you go somewhere and it's like oh i can see a whole story here or a book here or whatever it's like the first um uh, tokyo storyfronts that i did uh were um inspired by um uh, uh -huh. were inspired were inspired by a shop that i uh, was just seeing from my bedroom window I mean I didn't have a bit bedroom it was just one room in which what I was living in 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 Tokyo but um, I saw this like hair salon like just outside of my window and it was the first shop that um, I wanted to to paint uh, it doesn't exist anymore sadly but um, yeah so the best location huntings are location huntings that uh, get you into a place that uh, you did not expect expect at all but yeah it's also nice to have a bit of knowledge about the place that you you go to so you don't expect miracles and then just um, go back with nothing but it's also important to kind of um, explore and, and see what you can get in, in a place that you don't know about yes 
um, about the woodblock prints. I ac I'm actually working on something right now, but um, this is still uh, a bit of a. Uh, I'll show you when it's done thing, so you can look forward to it because it's this kind of interesting project actually. So um, I usually don't accept commissions and I don't I, I don't do commissions, but um, uh, more than a commission, I am doing uh, this as a kind of collaboration. So um, yes, there is something that you can look forward to because I'm working on uh, something about ukiyo-e and wood block prints. So yeah, that will be that will be uh, really exciting when it's done, and I will make a video about it also. A bit more like here maybe. So as you can see, uh, I only use like the stamp tool. Uh, I never paint in uh, Photoshop. Uh, on my watercolors I always use parts of the painting to get the same texture and edges uh, as I already have so this is before and after so ideally uh, you should not be able to tell which part was um, done by hand and which I um, kind of fixed up in, in post And you have to be careful, especially um, when you like stamp tool things, not to leave like digital looking edges, um, which is an uh, obvious like telltale sign that something was like um, copied or whatever. Okay, maybe a bit here. I mean, I, I could just leave it like it is, uh, it's not bad, but um, uh, I spent like two days on this, so I can spend uh, like a half an hour more and um, do some things that I think will, would add a nice touch for this part here. Uh, I'm actually not going to this. This is not have been officially um, announced yet but um, I was not able to participate and I had to cancel this uh, thing uh, I will be making a video um, that will be put on their website uh, with my kind of speech thing but I was not able to go because of um, some of health things and also of the virus thing and all kinds of things that are going right now so I'm, I'm not even sure how the situation will look like in like a few days so yeah i would like to experiment with other techniques um mostly uh, i'm interested in um uh, like woodbrook wood block prints right now but um, I will not be making the, the, the wood block thing by myself uh, so I'm just kind of the designer here uh, but um, from things that I would like to try are uh, I would like to try acrylic gouache more uh, because uh, I have this background in background painting yeah uh, and but I didn't don't like the poster col poster colors so much. So the the, the paints that are you usually used for making backgrounds. Um, so I like more how acrylic gouache kind of behave because you can layer them without being kind of afraid that um, the layer that you do on top will spoil what you already did. Uh, because they go uh, waterproof when they are dry so um, it leaves you a bit more uh, flexibility uh, to try stuff and, and, and fix mistakes so um, that would be something that I would like to try uh, if I had a bit of uh, 
an idea to what to do with them i don't want to just like paint random stuff and also i am kind of interested in uh, riso prints so um i don't know anything about them but they look great uh, and i have eyes on a nice riso uh, prints uh, shop in tokyo so maybe i would like to do <laughs> some printings with them also if i have the opportunity and and time to do uh, but now i'm kind of um uh, busy trying to set up my um, upcoming online store with the Hokkaido in ink book and other things that I did. I did uh, with Kana uh, some collaborations to uh, make some products for that shop and I sent the books. They already arrived in US so I think that the shop uh, will be opened in um, like soon. It's not up to me so I can not tell you exactly when but um, soon and also uh, as I told you in one of my videos recently I want to focus a bit more on making stories and something that is more uh, about telling uh, stories with my art which um, I'm really keen about this year so <clears throat> uh, that is a thing that I would like to focus on So like comics or stuff that is similar to comics and maybe animations if I have a chance. I don't know about any uh, international universities in, in Japan but um, I would recommend going to your um embassy so uh, japanese embassy in your country and asking if they have any scholarship programs uh, for you to um, attend a university in, in japan this is what i did actually uh, to come to japan and uh, uh, to be able to study here and then work i don't think i would i would be able to to come to Japan without the scholarship that I got. Um, I hope you are all safe from the virus thing. <sighs> okay, so I'll copy a bit here part that I'm using the most erase the part that I don't need okay and I'll select this and I turn it a bit like this and I'll um, uh, uh, sharpen it a bit sharpen so I can use it uh, here because I need edges that are more vertical here. I use a lot of the same colors which is a stupid advice I know but um, it actually works um, if you um, kind of um, limit yourself to using only colors that you already have uh, in your painting or in other paintings from the same book uh, then um, you have to work with this limited palette that you decided yourself and it helps a lot actually uh, I would also um, pick an illustration for example that I like to use as a palette so for the first few pictures I would use um, a picture or a photo of, or a screen capture from a movie or whatever that um, has nice colors and nice uh, nowadays you say grading that I like and um, I would like to um, achieve something similar in my work so um, I would use a 
picture like that as a uh, the first kind of palette for my uh, picture and few pictures and then I would um, use those done pictures to then use them as a palette for the next ones and next ones and sometimes you feel like okay but I have one picture that is night and one picture that is day and I cannot use one for the other yes you can actually um, it, like night is not just dark and black you can make really vivid pictures that look like they're um, night pictures so um, kind of limiting yourself with with uh, a palette that you have from somewhere or just it's your a different picture of yours is really a kind of liberating experience actually because you know what you're working with you also can do a, a like a swat swatch palette in Photoshop with just like few colors that uh, you know that you want you work with each other and uh, you know you want to use these. So yeah, these are some methods that you can um, try. Ah, no, this this Japanese is not so hard to speak, uh, but it's hard to read. Um, I have learned the basics in like three months to be able to s speak uh, like simple stuff and then um, I just learned in combat in combat so um, after three months of, of learning in Japanese I was just thrown in thrown into the university life so I had to learn fast to survive um, and it was a stressful experience but uh, I learned yes so okay so oh, yeah we have to erase this part here yes uh, okay so um before it looked like this and it was just a big bunch of leaves here and now it looks like this which is more airy and nice looking i guess uh, but i want to add a bit more here uh, so we have a more even more space here okay I guess I need an edge here okay okay so I could actually go uh, to infinity with 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 those details and just um, play with them but um, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be good and it's okay. So um, I think we have all the details and we um, cleaned up all the kind of weird garbage stuff. Let's check if this part is okay. Uh, it looks all right. Okay. We don't have any weird, weird stuff when it connects with when uh, where this part connects to the main part. Okay, so I would make a folder here with the name of fix. So these are the fixes that we did. Uh, really minor stuff. The 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 biggest one is the plant in on the top. Uh, and now I would do um, color correction a bit. Already this looks really nice and I like how it looks like the colors are vibrant and the contrast is there uh, actually uh, so I will not do a lot of things here but um, let's see what we can do here let's add a layer here let's turn it to overlay and um, maybe some curves uh, let's see 
some I'll add some contrast but you have to be careful with watercolor paintings because it's easy to kill um, the texture on like bright parts if you go over it it burns it out so um, it's important not to overdo um, like contrast and layer uh, levels and on this layer I will um, paint some things with a nice soft brush it's like this just a soft brush and I want to make this part here more reddish because um, of the light from the roof so I'll pick a color from here like just dark red and see how it works not on this layer like here okay and let's make it a bit over the top I can then um, turn the layer uh, down a bit okay and this shadow goes into this bluish tint here okay like this and then I want this bottom part to be more yellowish maybe a bit so it looks more like it's in the Sun a bit too much but I can erase it a bit not the flow the opacity okay yeah something like this and I want this sign to be more kind of yellowish also just a, just a bit uh, okay so the difference is not so startling but just a bit and on this top part here make it like more contrasty but um, this top part here so the top part with the things like on the roof I want to uh, kind of increase the distance so let's make them brighter a bit let me roughly uh, make a new layer and let's make it on this layer so let's uh, overlay like this overlay okay and then I can erase the edge with a nice brush like this one for example the chalk just here it's so slight you cannot even see it but it's there okay so this layer makes this top part um, a bit more bluish and kills the dark parts a bit so it's nice for giving the top part a more kind of distance looked look uh, a more air perspective it's a bit harsh so let's make it like 70% and this layer makes the bottom part more reddish blue shadow which I like uh, but it's also a bit harsh so let's make it like 70% okay so let's select those and put them into a group and let's name it color adjustment and we can see the difference okay top part is a bit strong still like 60 maybe yes I would like to make the plants here a bit brighter also so I will add a bit of a, like a greenish blue here maybe more greenish than blue okay so they don't um, they are not so visible yeah, so something like this I guess
okay so this is basically it um i would avoid like over over um colorizing stuff uh, mostly i just fix mistakes and um add some parts that um, I did on, on different pieces of paper and um, erase like um, trash that got into the painting when I was painting or when I was scanning and I got rid of the paper texture around the contents so I can put it on white background on my website or in a book and I don't have to worry about it being kind of weird and, and, and textured. Okay. Uh, so this is how the picture looks like. And I would, okay, let's, I will show you the whole thing. And I will save it. Hey. And I called this shop Morishita because it means like under um, wood. And there is actually a brand of uh, typewriters that's called under wood. So if someone knows it, that's a, like a pun, I guess. Okay. And now I can flatten everything and make the image like 1000. Tall, so we can see how it looks like when it's nice and small. We can put a bit of a sharpening or something. Okay, so okay, that's that's this. Um, uh, my scanner is the Canon Canon Scan 9000 F Mark II, and all my digital tools and brushes and stuff are on my website in my uh, frequently asked questions and tools section there so you can read more about them also what computer and whatever i use uh, so that's it okay thank you for joining me i would i will probably make this uh, stream available for you so um when you want to check how i edit my watercolors you can just uh, watch this one and most of my watercolor paintings I do uh, like this um, sometimes when I have a painting that's been scanned in two halves I have to join them together but also that is already on my YouTube there is a video of that so uh, yeah thank you very much for joining me today and um, see you in a video I will make a video uh, how I painted this one and if you have any suggestions of uh, cute stores that you would like me to paint uh, go to the previous video of this series it's already on uh, my um, YouTube and you can add some suggestions if you have anything that's uh, not mentioned yet in by other people there so yeah okay thank you for joining me and um, good night actually because it's late in Japan so 